Around six months ago, I covered every single Jolly game in the series. At least, I thought I had. However, after posting that video, it was brought to my attention that there are actually two more Jolly games in the series, titled Jolly Bees and Jolly Bees Phase 2. I had a ton of comments telling me I needed to play them for myself, however, after doing a quick search on Game Jolt, nothing appeared. And that was actually due to the games being deleted. See, Jolly Bees and Jolly are both based on a restaurant chain in Australia that goes by the same name. Similar to Chuck E. Cheese, the brand has its very own mascot, only instead of it being an animatronic, it is a wearable suit. Unlike Chuck E. Cheese, however, Jollibees dislike the idea of a fan game being based on their iconic location and characters, so the developer had to take the game down, effectively wiping any trace of it off the internet. Jollibees can no longer be played, as it was taken down due to infringement of trademark rights. Or so they thought, as many people took it upon themselves to repost the game's download links. Seriously, it only takes one Google search to find the game, so it's safe to say removing it from Game Jolt didn't really keep the game under wraps. Anyways, without any more rambling, let's look into Jolly Bees, the deleted FNAF fan game they don't want you to play. Well, our children have been victims of food poisoning earlier this morning while at a party at a, at a local fast food restaurant. Surveillance footage shows that an unknown man wearing blue fur and blue broke into the kitchen, kitchen and added what seemed to be chemicals, which was later given to the children. 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 After a really sick intro cutscene which details the shutting down of Jollibees due to food poisoning, our first night begins. But not how our typical FNAF fan game night begins. No, instead we start our shift at the entrance of the restaurant. This is a really cool concept that is used a lot in this game. Basically, we need to do tasks around the restaurant during the game, so letting us walk around in this space before each night really lets us connect with the location more than we ever could in other FNAF fan games. I actually remember one of the games in my obscure FNAF fan games video had something very similar to that and I really liked it. The building also has a creepy atmosphere with eerie noises and the sound of dripping water which all give the location a worn down feeling and makes you feel like you really shouldn't be there. Anyways, we are allowed to go wherever we please but we are given the objective to find our office. Finding the office starts the actual first night of the game where we must survive in the typical FNAF fashion. During the office sections of gameplay we have a few things we need to keep track of. To our right is an animatronic behind a curtain which needs to be flashed every once in a while to stop her from killing you. If you wait a long time, she will slowly move closer and closer to the window, however flashing for a few seconds will reset her to her original location. In front of us is a door with a window. Every once in a while, an animatronic can peek its head into the window and to stop them from killing you, you need to turn your power off and hide until you think the animatronic has gone away. Now this mechanic didn't work as intended I'm pretty sure, as most of the time it had me raging, but I'll go more into that later. To the left of us is also a big open vent. There are two animatronics that try to get us from this vent, that being this burger guy and this other animatronic right here, and we must keep track of the vents using the cameras and seal them if an animatronic is approaching. However, the longer the vent is sealed, the more air we lose. Especially if you have both vents sealed, then you're basically screwed because you run out of air so fast. One really cool gimmick about the two animatronics that come in the vents is that they each have another way of getting rid of them. If you know the burger guy is in the vent, then you can flash him with your light and he will go away. If the other animatronic is in the vent, however, you can make sure you don't flash the light on her and this will actually save you from her killing you. This creates a whole new layer of skill with dealing with these animatronics as you can skip out on sealing the vent if you have the confidence that you know which animatronic is in the vent. It also adds a really cool risk reward mechanic to the gameplay rhythm that keeps things interesting. Now there is also one more mechanic that is not good at all. This mechanic had me slamming my keyboard every time I died to it on later nights. So basically every once in a while you will get this virus thing. When the virus appears, no matter what you are doing, you need to quickly make your way to the cameras and find this little bug, which will be on one random camera. 
You only get a few seconds to stop this virus before you are instantly killed. And this mechanic made me so mad because it's completely RNG based. Sometimes the virus will be on the first camera you check and sometimes it'll be on the last, meaning you're dead, all because you couldn't guess correctly. You also get these ad pop-ups similar to Pizza Sim that can appear at random and will slow you stopping the virus even more, and they are just so annoying. One cool detail I did notice however is that the ads are for other fan games, like they have the Twisted Carnival in here, Honey Bears, Oh yeah, and also don't even get me started on when an animatronic appears at the window and the virus pops up. Like what does the game want me to do? Do I turn off the light and hide from the animatronic at the window? Do I search for the virus? Oh yeah, and then the turning off the light mechanic also just wouldn't work most of the time, but I think I've figured it out now. So after a few seconds of waiting with the light off, the prompt appears telling you that you can turn your light back on, but I still kept getting jump scared. What was I possibly doing wrong? Was I waiting too long before turning off the light? Well, no. Turns out the game tells you you can turn your light on, but you actually need to wait a little extra time to make sure the animatronic is gone. There's no audio cue or visual cue for this or anything. You just kind of have to guess how long to keep the power off, and if you're in too much of a rush to get the light on, well, you're dead. Also, I don't know if it was just because the rage building up inside me, but tell me these aren't the most annoying jump scare noises you've ever heard. This had me raging so bad, especially during the later nights where I was dying over and over again. Now, despite how mad this game was making me, it's actually not all that bad. The graphics are seriously impressive, especially for when the game came out, along with all of the animations. The gameplay feels very snappy and easy to understand despite all of the RNG sections, and things like the gameplay with the animatronics and the vents make me think that the gameplay was really well thought out, and just a few bad things got thrown into the mix. One last gripe I do have though with the office gameplay is that most of the cameras are useless when actually playing. Other than when you need to look for the virus, you will almost never use any of the cameras on the right side. My strategy when playing was to primarily only check the two vent cams, as if any other animatronics attacked, I could easily see them at the door. This seemed like a big oversight, and I think that adding at least one more animatronic that needed to be monitored throughout the building would have given this game a lot more depth. Lack of animatronics is also an issue in this game. While all of the characters are beautifully designed and do a great job of representing the characters from Jollibees, most of their gameplay is the same. Two animatronics can come from the left vent, two can come up to the front door, and you have the one on the right that's always there. Adding just one more character to the game would have been very nice. Now luckily this game isn't content dry at all, as there are actually new tasks between every single night. So after we finish night one, which isn't too hard at all, we are once again set free in the pizzeria, only this time we are told to go to Yum's party room. After eventually finding the room, this kicks off our very first post night task. In this one, we need to monitor Yum with our flashlight while turning these gears. This section does seem cool at first, but very quickly you realize how easy and repetitive it is. It is extremely easy to stop Yum from killing you as the sound cues make it very obvious when they move. There is also almost no tension built up, so basically it's just a 5 minute section of this. Night 2's post game task has us go to Twirly's show stage. This mini game takes a very similar approach to the last. Once again we must endure the torture of slowly turning a bunch of knobs. I have no idea whose idea it was to put this many, but yeah, there's that many. The gameplay for avoiding Twirly is a little different however. This time if we hear a sound cue and see Twirly approaching, we must hide under our desk. During this under the desk section, we need to position ourselves in a way so that Twirly's eyes will be blocked by the chairs. It's a cool overall concept, however just like the previous mini game, there is little to no tension and ends up being another boring repetitive section you wish you could just get through faster. Night 3's post game task suffers the exact same problem 
problem. Spin the little things, look up when you hear a sound cue, and stop the animatronic. Only this time it's even easier. Literally all you do is drag this thing in front of the animatronic, and apparently that is enough to stop them from killing you. Night 4 actually had the most unique post night minigame of them all. This one has us enter Jollibee's room, and in here we need to sweep the floor while also making sure we don't walk into Jollibee. Kind of similar to the walking sections in Sister Location. Now this section was once again far too easy and I'll admit it does look a little goofy when you're sweeping, but I can appreciate what the developers were going for and will give them credit for making this one just a little bit harder. Also it's really cool shining your light on Jollibee and seeing the little animation he does to walk away, I just thought that was a cool detail. For the fifth and final post night task, we are told to go fix Hedy, and this is where the game branches off into to four different endings. The discovery ending is unlocked by skipping one of the tasks earlier in the game and going to the parts and service room after night 5. Here you will find some tapes from an old technician who was killed by Hetty. The suspense ending is unlocked by leaving the building after night 5 concludes, which shows us an advertisement for the Jolly Bees restaurant. The slacker ending is achieved by skipping every assigned task, which results in the player receiving a paycheck and a pink slip for not doing the tasks the manager asked. Nobody told me you were able to skip these sections the whole time. I thought you had to do all of them. The death ending, or true ending, which is the one I got, occurs after the player completes night 5 along with all previous tasks and then enters Hetty's room. Upon entering we hear a tape from the Jolly Entertainment CEO Kevin Johnson, who some of you may recognize from my previous Jolly video. He tells us to click a button on the side of Hetty's neck and put on the suit, which causes this to happen. <laughs> It's over. We got him. Very well. Now on the phase two. Basically our player is killed in the suit and the game ends off with a cliffhanger leading into the next Jollibee's game, Jollibee's Phase 2. I have played through around half of Jollibee's Phase 2, however it is taking me a very long time to complete that game. And because it's been so long since my last upload, I'm only going to be covering phase 1 in this video. Overall, I don't think that Jollibees is a bad fan game. Despite my many gripes with the gameplay, those things can be overlooked and the game has many more things about it that you can appreciate. First of all, the art and animations the game presents are all fantastic looking. I especially really like the cutscenes that were done for the opening and ending of the game. It really did a lot to breathe life into the game's universe and get me interested in what's going on at Jollibee's. While the gameplay isn't very diverse, the game makes up for it with the many locations we get to explore, the different jobs we are allowed to do, and the multiple endings we are allowed to unlock. The game also has its own unique identity and gives us stuff like an extras menu and even a sixth night. My overall consensus for Jollibee's is that it is an amazing FNAF fan game to watch. Very similar to something like Sister Location, but just isn't as much fun when you are actually playing for yourself. The game seems to get overwhelming praise from the FNAF community as far as I've seen, so I'm really interested in hearing what you guys think about this game. Anyways, that has been the video. Thank you all so much for the continuing support on the channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Peace.